Welcome to Open Geology. This is a series of videos to share geology with everyone. This was created by a group of Salt Lake Community College professors and goes along with the book opengeology.org slash textbook where we have an entire online textbook available free to everyone. Today we're going to talk about metamorphic rock ID, identifying metamorphic rocks. And we're going to talk about foliated, non-foliated rocks, and how to identify those things. So, when geologists are trying to put rocks into these different categories, a lot of times they're really just trying to tell the story of how the rock formed. And that brings us to metamorphic rocks and how those are generally categorized. And for the sake of my class, I usually categorize metamorphic rocks based on two things, something known as texture and something known as grade. And the first thing you want to decide is, uh, or some of the things you want to think about are, was heat or pressure the dominant kind of player in metamorphosing this rock? Sometimes it's hard to distinguish. Uh, and then, then you can get into like how much pressure was applied in that case. What kind of minerals are present? And the minerals are really going to be the true storytellers in these rocks. And when it comes to metamorphic rocks, minerals are what is telling you about the heat and pressure conditions that generated that metamorphic rock. And uh, it'll also give you some information and some clues about the protolith, the rock that came before that rock. Texture uh, is the is essentially a word f in the case of metamorphic rocks that will tell you about the shape and arrangement of the mineral grains in the rock. And for the sake of my class, it's knowing the difference between a non-foliated texture and a foliated texture. And we'll talk about foliation. Foliation is this idea, think... Uh, Foliage as in leaves on a tree, right? This is the alignment of mineral grains, uh, just like uh, an alignment of leaves. You get stacks and alignment of these platy layers. And this could be uh, layers like in a slate, but it can also be uh, more visible mineral layers. Uh, some examples that you could see are dark and light bands of minerals, like in a gneiss. You can look for aligned platy minerals, like micas in a schist, which we'll look at pictures of, or even el elongated pebbles. In areas where the rock cleaves, uh, if the rock cleaves into nice thin layers, it's a good indicator that you're working with a rock that has foliation. Rocks that have lineation are also categorized under these foliated rocks. And these are rocks that have uh, line, aligned minerals in just one, one line, not in a plane like, like we're seeing with these cardboard boxes. And um, foliation can form in different ways during the process of metamorphism. You could be rotating platy minerals or recrystallizing uh, old minerals into new minerals that are perpendicular into in the direction of maximum stress. Or you can, you can just be flattening some spherical shaped grains like you could see in a medic conglomerate sometimes. Those pebbles are squished. Uh, and that's from flattening. So all of these are common ways. Rotation, recrystallization, flattening. So let's look at metamorphic grade, which is the second type of thing. And once you decide that you have a foliated rock, you can decide what the metamorphic grade for that rock is. And th this is essentially a measure of how much the amount that the rock has changed during metamorphism. It's, it's a measure of the amount of metamorphism that the rock has undergone. You can go from a low grade metamorphic rock, which indicates a small amount or low metamorphism, smaller heat and pressure conditions to a high grade, a high metamorphism. And 
just as a reminder, during metamorphism, you're maintaining a solid rock, essentially. You're not turning it to a liquid. So here is the progression of grade from low to high. And these are your different names up here of your different foliated metamorphic rocks. You have a slate, the lowest grade, then a phyllite, a schist, and a gneiss. Go beyond nice in terms of the pressure temperature scenario, and you get into the migmatite, which is a precursor for um, a completely melted uh, a magma. And then you're getting into the realm of igneous rocks here. So here's a picture of each. Um, some of the ways I remember how some of these look is uh, slate uh, used to be used for chalkboards. We have mostly whiteboards in our rooms now, but a chalkboard, just imagine a chalkboard or a nice pool table. It cleaves along nice planes. It looks a lot like shale, which is a sedimentary rock. And a lot of times you can metamorphose a sedimentary rock uh, shale to get slate. Slate has a little bit more of a clinky sound uh, when you knock it together. Phyllite is the next level up from slate. And the good way to identify phyllite is the sheen. It looks, uh, I like to use the analogy of a catfish skin. It looks a lot like catfish skin. It's shiny and kind of wavy. Uh, the micas aren't quite developed enough to make out individual mica grains, but you can see a nice shiny sheen, like a smooth, uh, smooth fish, a smooth fish, like a catfish. And the schist is the next step up. And while we're using fish analogies, um, we can say uh, that schist looks like fish scales. So an alignment of fish scales or sequins is another good way to think about it. We have tiny uh, tiny to medium-sized micagrains lining up and kind of overlapping into a foliated pattern. And then finally, you have nice, uh, which are these alternating light and dark bands of light and dark minerals. So let's look at a picture of each one. So here's some slate. Uh, here's a nice slate roof in this picture. And some of potential protoliths include shale, mudstone, or siltstone. And this is the a fine-grained metamorphic rock. Here's a nice picture of phyllite, and you can see that sheen, that catfish skin-like texture. And this uh, this is between a slate and a schist. It's kind of a low to medium grade metamorphic rock. And the platy micaceous minerals are a little bit larger than what you'd see in a slate, but not large enough to see without a petroscope. Here's a schist. There's a thumb for scale, and you can see little individual mica grains glittering out there, very much like a little sequins or glitter, glittery rock. And these will often exhibit planar or layered structure, so expressing their foliation. And finally, here's a nice. This is you have high-grade metamorphic rock. You get migration of ions that results into segregation of light and dark minerals. And here is a uh, augen nice. So it has these eye-shaped. Augen is a German word for eye, and it has these eye-shaped features in here, which could form from shearing uh, in, in some cases. Uh, another common thing you could see in metamorphic rocks, especially uh, schists, I've seen a lot in schists, are these porphyroblasts. And uh, th here are some garnets you know, with a coin for scale. And oftentimes they'll be surrounded by smaller micas or something like that. And this could end it, help give you clues about the grade. These garnets generally indicate a higher grade of metamorphic rock than just a schist by itself. Then the non-foliated rocks are a little bit more straightforward. They don't have um, as distinguishable of these different grades. So some of the examples we like to look at are marble, quartzite, and hornfels. And a lot of, a lot of times these are organized because they lack visible foliation we organize them based on the minerals that they contain. So here's some marble. Uh, marble, its protolith is limestone. So marble contains calcite that has been recrystallized 
and you can uh, determine if it's marble if it doesn't scratch glass and if it fizzes with hydrochloric acid you could indicate that you are working with marble and um, you you've probably seen a lot of bathrooms have marble and it comes in a huge variety of colors here's an, another type of non-foliated rock this is a quartzite and a lot of times its parent rock its protolith is a quartz rich sandstone and this is uh, like marble it has like a sugary appearance a sugary texture where the grains are fused together except uh, unlike marble a quartzite will scratch glass and it will not fizz with hydrochloric acid and a hornfell's uh, uh, it could often look brick like or even dark or black these are baked shales or clay rich rocks and so it's essentially like a natural brick a lot of times these are created by contact metamorphic contact metamorphism conditions so that is it for um, identifying metamorphic rocks. Something to note is that it, with the foliated metamorphic rocks, you can you can always skip grades. Uh, it doesn't necessarily always make this progression from slate to nice. Okay, I hope that was helpful in helping you identify metamorphic rocks. And uh, please do follow the page if you're interested in learning more. Thanks.